They put the digital crown on a desktop? That, okay, that, that is, de that, you know, I, I definitely did not see that one coming. So Microsoft at today's keynote unveiled lots of new things like the creator's update for Windows 10 coming next year. Who cares? And that the Surface Book is getting an i7 core update with the 30% better battery life. Who cares? The Surface Studio desktop. A 28 inch desktop display touchscreen that works with the Surface Pen. When I saw it, I basically see a really fancy TV that's connected to a tiny Mac mini at the bottom and that Mac mini is stuffed full of power. We've got Intel i7 cores, we've got GTX Nvidia cards, up to four gigabytes of GPU. Some of you out there are saying I don't know how to measure GPU by just saying that's four gigabytes, that doesn't mean anything. That's what Microsoft did on their homepage though, so we're both wrong or we're both right, one or the other, or you're wrong out there, whatever. This thing is incredible. It's almost unbelievable, especially when it comes to prices. So this thing is of course running Windows 10, but with that mount it has you can lay it almost all the way flat so that you can use it like a desk. It really is like having a, I don't know what you call it, engineer board desktop that's kind of slanted so you can write on it. It's definitely made so that you can use the Surface Pen with it, which is supposedly very helpful for artists and engineers out there. And they made this really cool thing that I personally think stole the show because it was genius, almost Apple-esque. This tiny little thing called the dial, the Surface dial. And I believe via Bluetooth, it's able to connect with the Surface desktop, Surface Studio. Sorry, I keep wanting to say desktop. I mean, it is a desktop, but it's also just a desk, period. Studio is a good name for it. Good naming idea. But with the Surface Dial, you can alter all kinds of things in third-party apps as well as just the system itself. So you want to change the screen brightness, the Surface Studio's volume, or if you want to select the exact right color you're looking for while you're drawing a picture, or even change the color as you're drawing it. That really hasn't been possible before. And you can have it to the side of the Surface Studio or put it directly on the display and it will light up and recognize what it is. And that that dial has haptic feedback. So as you're spinning it, it'll tap so you know what you're changing to. That's just really smart and thought out. Unfortunately, it's not included with the Surface Studio. It's $99 separately. This really is Apple-esque. Look how expensive it is. And while I'm on the topic of price, the Surface Studio starts at three grand. Whoa, okay. And for that three grand version, you're getting 256 gigs of storage. Yikes. That, probably gonna need more than that. And currently there is only three options to configure from. A three grand one, a three and a half grand one where you get 512 gigs of storage, and like a $4,200 one, which gives you a terabyte. So yeah, that bites you in the butt. It's almost the same pricing as Apple's Mac Pro, which hasn't been updated in three years. Plus you're getting a great display with it. A giant touch display for that matter. Now I'm sure the question a lot of us are saying out there right now is, do I think that this is way better than Apple's iMac? And I'm going to point to something Microsoft said themselves today. They have created a new genre of product. I think they're very right about that given the giant price gap between Apple's iMac and the Surface Studio. They're almost not in the same category at all. They do a lot of the same things, I understand, but the price range is so drastic. So I'm not going to count the regular 21 and a half inch iMac just because that's infinitely cheaper. That's like a thousand dollars and that's just a fine workstation for everyday people. It doesn't need to be overly advanced. It's just a basic computer that works. But the 27 inch 5k resolution iMac that starts at $1,800 and the Surface Studio starts at $3,000 so almost twice the price my point is anyone in the market for a desktop computer which is increasingly rare these days I don't think they're gonna be comparing which one should I get if you're going to invest in the Surface Studio I'm jealous immediately I'd love to get my hands on one somehow definitely not visiting Best Buy but I think the purpose of the studio is not to have the best specs in the world the main appeal is that touch display which again is amazing and that dial for pro people who need to move things precisely. I think that's what you're really buying into, not the specs. If you wanted specs, what you can get out of a Mac Pro for $3,000 is pretty insane. Not just a quad core. You're getting an Intel Exeon chip with eight cores, configurable up to 12, and I know you're not getting a monitor, but in other words, I don't see any reason for someone to be on the fence about this. If you want the high-end specs and you don't like Apple's operating system, then you should just build your own PC. That would be much, much cheaper than a Surface Studio. And of course, if you want that touch display that does all that fancy thing with the surface pen and the surface dial yeah the iMac doesn't even have a touch screen so why would you even go there so it's essentially appealing to the same people who bought the surface book they need some pretty good specs but they also need something to draw on I think that's a very niche market I know there's a lot of you out there and I'm happy that you found a product that works for you but I don't think it's most consumers and the surface studio is definitely not for everyday people It'd be great if it was though if this was half the price man is that cool so don't get me wrong I'm gonna go into a little bit 
bit of my criticisms of it. I still love the thing and I would love to have one and I'd love to play with one. But let me just bring up, we have had desktop touchscreens before and there's a reason they never really caught on. It's because having a touchscreen at that scale always seems to get messy. Imagine the fingerprints on your iPad. Just on my iPad Pro, it looks kind of ugly if you don't clean the screen off. And so I'm just imagining that on a 28 inch display and how ginormous that is covered in fingerprints. A friend of mine has a 5K 27 inch iMac. That's what I do my live streams from. That thing we have to try not to touch as much as possible because once you get a flake on there, it's really, really noticeable. And now this desktop is like, please touch it. You're supposed to interact with the display. It's, it's gonna make it look ugly over time. And my other biggest problem with it is just Windows 10. Not a fan of how they forcefully installed it on a lot of people's computers and personally found it a being an inconsistent experience for everyone. Certain people had certain problems. Other people had different kinds of problems. I don't feel like it's a smoothened out operating system. There's a lot of cracks in the seams and I haven't had good experiences with it. If you have had good experiences with Windows 10, I am so, so happy for you. I don't hate you. I don't think you're wrong. I just, I think a lot of people can agree with me that Windows 10 was a kind of bumpy release and still might be a bumpy release now. But hopefully since this is hardware and software built together, we won't have any of those kinds of problems. I had several with the Surface Pro that I was iffy on. But hey, this thing has Hey Cortana built into it so you can use your desktop from afar. iMacs can't do that and even the newest ones can't. So that's pretty cool. And again, I think it's the Surface Dial that really stole the show. That is like one of the coolest ideas I have ever seen for professionals and pro editors. For consumers, there's no point. In fact, consumers have no point in buying a Surface Studio because there's an increase in the purpose of having a desktop computer nowadays given you can have a mobile powerhouse nowadays with how thin and strong laptops can be. But for the people who really do need that power or do need that real estate on a screen, the Surface Studio serves that. I think it's a small market, but dang, is that a cool product. And just out of curiosity, because I haven't found an answer for this, does the Surface Studio support VR headsets? Is it able to run Oculus and Vive software? I'm gonna assume yes, but if I'm wrong, tell me in the comments. So this is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.